All right. Well, welcome everybody to uh, our latest edition of Truth is the New Black, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. And I'm Patty Vargas, and I more or less am a, a producer on this show. And and I hand it off to to uh, my BFF here, Sean Marie Turry, uh, to lead us through. Um, this next fascinating session and Sean Marie always has the most juicy and exciting and interesting topics so it's it's a treat for me because I get to just sit here and be a participant as well so without further ado I'm handing it off to you Sean Marie thank you so much Patty and I love having you as a participant in these conversations it's really a treat for me so Thank you for being such a great producer. And I wanna welcome everybody to our next uh, edition of Truth is the New Black. This is a fireside style conversation about everything imaginable from the business to the personal. And this is really about the intersection where our deepest desires and our sincerity meet strategy and what's practical in bringing our dreams and our passions and our desires to life. And today I have the absolute pleasure of having one of my nearest and dearest on today's call is our featured guest and Dr. Jen McIntosh, uh, who I absolutely cherish. Uh, she is a fellow Desire Map Facilitator, which I am as well. Uh, she is a 16-year uh, civilian employee of our Department of Defense. And Jen has this really magical way of combining uh, strategy with holistic practices, with um, you know the, the things that you wouldn't think typically complement one another. And she is a mathematician, and she, she's one of those rare people that has the ability to bring the creative and passionate and soulful part in with that more linear part of our thinking and i don't know a lot of people that have the ability to like really access those two parts of their brain and, and jen does it better than almost anyone i've met so uh without further ado um creating goals with soul how do you do that you start by putting your heart on the agenda and that is our topic for today so dr jen mcintosh i want to welcome you to our call tonight thank you so much for being here thank you i'm so excited uh to be here mm. december december 11th seemed really far away when we first started talking <laughs> about it it did so, didn't it Yep. And so uh, there are so many great things to talk about. So I'll kind of follow your lead since um, I'm a novice to the format of this, uh, of this, this show. Um, but I, I would love to meet whoever it was that you just introduced because she sounded phenomenal. <laughs> Well, I know her personally, and she's somebody I'm pretty crazy about, so I'd love to introduce you to her if you actually don't know her. Um, but what I'd love to do, Jen, is, uh, like I was saying, like you have this ability to combine, especially doing the work that you do. Um, you are a civilian employee for the Department of Defense, and you know that can be pretty weighty, heady kind of work, and yet you are also a uh, I know that you have brought yoga into the DOD, um, that you are really finding a way to bring these practices of the things that are truly important to you, that you feel really help move the needle from a business perspective, from a strategic perspective. And with our topic today, you know, how do you set goals with soul? Question mark. You put your heart on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So I would love to just dive in a little bit if you want to share what your experience has been like with taking concepts like that into an environment professionally that you would not think typically would be open to that or where you know someone might think like gosh i would really love to bring this to work but it would never fly so how are you managing those conversations and in addition what are some of the things that you've come up against maybe resistance wise and how have you found your way through them so I'm, I'm glad you asked. It's, um, it's been an interesting journey, I'd say, over the last year or so. And I'll start with a little bit of a personal uh, bent to it to, to kind of underpin how I ended up doing what I do. Um, I was in a role where I was charged to help um, bring people 
on board with after a big change organizationally to help decide. And so my, I'll get into my ex, quote expertise in a second. But um, my my job was to go talk to these senior leaders on a regular, on a biweekly basis and kind of keep them on track with uh, things that had been decided and ways that they could then put put the put um, do their part to implement uh, but every single and and this was a Tuesday morning meeting uh, and I'm not a morning person so Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday mornings every single meeting was horrible and mm. this was very confusing for me because I kind of prided myself as being one of these few technical people that could uh, adjust the way that I spoke to this person for this reason versus the way that I speak to another person. Um, or as Sean Marie and I often process things out loud, maybe I'm talking and we're in a brainstorming session and I can do that level of communication or if I need to get to the point on something, but I, I still want to express myself. And in this particular weekly, uh, every other week meeting, I found myself um, continually faced with wondering why I wasn't connecting. Where was the, why wasn't I able to kind of show up like I normally do, feeling confident in my own voice mm -hmm. and um, being received with the, best, most noble intent possible. Like, so why was it that there was all, already kind of a, you know, a feeling like uh, when I walk in the room, regardless of what I said, what was happening. And over, uh, over the course of, you know, not, it didn't take very long, but basically Tuesday was my day to cry every, every day after work. And um, so I would come home and family knew oh, crap, it's Tuesday, leave mom alone. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because she's, she's just, not, she's going to be feeling what went wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I accelerated all of the learning that I've always done. So um, I'm 200 hour certified yoga instructor. Um, I turned on the juice with everything. I went on, I don't know how many retreats, workshops, neuroscience conferences about brain and behavior and everything. I mean, I soaked everything I possibly could in, listened to lots of podcasts, everything to keep trying to see how I could show up differently when I got into this meeting. And um, one of the things that happened was over time, I kind of was dying inside mm. <laughs> um, because no amount of personal self-development was making a difference in this particular role and I was in line uh, getting coffee at work and somebody asked me hi you know how's it going and I start to talk to them and I see a look on their face this look that I often give to other people which is when the Debbie Downer starts to talk about how bummed out they are about their work or how they're being received not well or this and that. And you're, and they're like, ah, how can we cut this conversation short? Cause this person is a true downer. And I realized at that moment, Oh my gosh, I've become Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lost all my spark. I lost everything. And I realized I was twisting myself into knots to be whatever it was that I thought they wanted. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what it was at the end that I had become, but it wasn't me. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that realization um, led me to first just thinking about, uh, I think I've given it the, the old college try after so long about doing this. And how do I, how do I extricate myself for this? So number one, I have to put myself first. Mm -hmm. Number two is that as I'm learning about the desire map and Sean Marie and I are going to talk about that, um, which is <laughs> how is it that I want to feel most of the time? Mm -hmm. And if I'm not feeling that way, what the heck am I going to do in order to change my situation on a daily basis? So I wound up writing an article for an internal newsletter um, 
And the title of that article was, are you an Eeyore? <laughs> <laughs> and then and five, four ways to get your soul back. And that springboarded into multiple things where I then took desire map content and I morphed it into language that technical people kind of would resonate with. So instead of saying words that didn't quite, uh, you know, that may sound quote woo woo, I would use phrases like how do you engineer your heart and your desire into mm. your workplace and so i just adopted a, a language that sort of resonated with the crowd but i just kept it and none of that's my job by the way <laughs> so uh but nonetheless the response was so heartfelt that people would reach out to me and say thank you so much for writing that um you know is is your is your session at the destination excellence conference recorded can we you know where can we see this and so i rec i started recording meditations uh that are for instance based on uh, other teachings that are associated with uh, uh danielle laporte's curriculum uh curriculum but uh <laughs> whatever the right word it's is. a curriculum curriculum <laughs> yeah um and and so it just became something that I integrated in as many ways as I possibly could from just the way that I was interacting on day-to-day -day conversations at work to the things that I would put on schedule. And so for instance, in January, uh, for the gym that's on site, I've created an eight week um, uh, exercise slash meditation class um, that's called Mind Body Reboot that is now gonna take folks partly through a little bit of this exploration about how you lead with your heart. And at the same time, using, using the energetics of yoga to just get that crap out of your system and be able to un better uncover what's going on. Also to be still or, or notice what's going on or use journaling. Um, so apologies if I went on a little too long with that, but that's kind of where, where I am now is recognizing um, that I wasn't the only Eeyore <laughs> and that so many people around were having that same feeling like I'm not being used to my best and fullest potential mm. and I can either keep whining about it or I can figure out how it is that I'm going to decide what it is that I want to do be feel think behave <laughs> And then I'm going to make sure that my environment supports that in, in, in however, however it's possible. And, and, and most people would be surprised that it, it is actually not as difficult to, to hone your environment to be a little bit more supportive of the way that you want to be uh, than we think it is. Um, a lot of people don't realize that you just have to ask <laughs> or you just have to do and not even ask. And um, and and so I can dive into a little bit about some of the some of the philosophy, but I'll I'll turn it back to you, Sean Marie. I actually, Jen, um, I would love for you to dive into some of the philosophy. And, and you said a couple of things that I think are really interesting. And one is you were having this conversation with this woman in the food line, and then you had a realization um, based on actually being present and recognizing right like having some social cues or being able to read social cues and you're like oh like this thing like you started to have it reflected back to you mm -hmm. and then you wrote this gorgeous newsletter and mm -hmm. just so much came up for me when you said that of course people responded because it was truthful mm -hmm. right so hence truth is the new black like a big part of this series that we do is really cutting through the bullshit and just talking about like what is really happening. And Jen, I know that you and I both are really big believers of this, but authenticity is irresistible, right? It's just, it is this, it is this thing that, that you can't even put a label to, you can't put your finger on it, but just something begins to happen and you just feel it. You just feel this attraction. And what I love about what you were talking about is that you, you didn't wait for somebody to ask you to do this. Like you just, you went with what your gut and your heart and your mind and your soul were telling you to do, which was to share this experience. And if you're anything like me, like sometimes I get to a point where like, I have to share it or I'm going to explode. Like I have to do something. 
write about it, blog about it, call a girlfriend on the phone. Like I have to get it out of my system. And so many of us reach that capacity, but then we push it back down. So I think it's really incredible that you didn't do that. Um, but if the, if the, if the philosophy and the way that you kind of bridge that gap between having that Debbie Downer moment and realization mm -hmm. to actually writing the blog, um, like what that conversation internally was like, where you actually were able to gain the confidence to just be like, I have to put this out there. And the other thing that I would love is if you would like to at some point tonight speak to um, the four ways to get your soul back. And, and you mentioned something called um, destination excellence. Mm -hmm. So that, which sounds, I mean, I don't know what that is, but I want to go like, that sounds incredible. I want, you know, I want my destiny to, or my destination to be excellence, but, but you, you talked about the four ways to get your soul back. So, so any part of what I've just kind of unpacked a little bit, um, if you would like to dive in and share, uh, I'm going to speak for the whole group. We'd all love to hear about it. <laughs> okay. So, um, the, the four ways to get your soul back were, um, a, a kind of a distillation down of everything that I had consumed over the course of a year, either through uh, those the the workshops. I went to an ashram. I mean, it's Good for like, you. It's, 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 like, <laughs> it's like like just you know I gotta get I gotta get back on track and something has to be done. I also went to a functional medicine doctor. And it was like they put me on a elimination diet to you know figure out you know what foods you know everything i was like everything has to get better i am not going to be in this so consuming all of those those you know manic kind of uh cries for help that i went out and 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 explored um i found four themes so theme number one is um about prioritizing your own wellness and as we all know your your performance or your attention or your concentration is so linked to things like your gut health um, mm. everything that's going on your stress levels all of these things and we become when we're look typing on a computer all day or interacting in meetings, we become so disconnected from what messages are even coming from our own body. So um, in, so I broke up, then I followed that the first article with a four part series. And so part number one on prioritizing the wellness, I thought, I love a good model. And these are, you know, people that are kind of technical thinking. Uh, Yoga actually already comes with a model for wellness of the body, and uh, the 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 Sanskrit term is kosha for sheath, and in that philosophy, we're made up of five sheaths, uh, five layers. Like think of Ru uh, Russian nesting dolls, mm -hmm. and where the outermost is, you know, your skin, your tissue, your muscles, your your you know your physical body, all of the things all the parts of you that's going to become food for the worms when you're gone, like all that stuff that is just tangible flesh and bone type stuff. So what are the things, so, and, and the reason for thinking of, of ourselves in this way, we're all interconnected. There's nothing to separate it. But if you're thinking of prioritizing your wellness, you can get at your wellness from multiple angles. And if you fix anything in any of these layers, you're going to have a ripple effect of fixing things in your whole entire body. And so uh, the physical layer, that, that deals with a lot of things like um, uh, making sure that you're, you're um, feeding yourself good food, that you're, you know, having, you know, that you're exercising enough, that you're doing all those things that are good for the physical body. The next layer is um, the pranic body, your energy. So the difference between you and a cadaver is electricity, is mm. the fact that you're breathing, that you're converting um, you know, the 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 nutrients you take in into energy and using it. So so what can you do on this level to prioritize your wellness? That's about all the things like breathing, about managing your energy, about managing all those, 
all, all the things that have to do with whether you feel alive and vibrant and, uh, and energized. Um, and I, I guess I won't go into all of the layers, but um, as you go deeper inwards, then you're starting to talk about um, um, the, the, the next layer. And I just blanked on the Sanskrit word. I apologize. Okay. But, but it's, it's closest to your limbic system, that part that all the unconscious thing that goes on that where you all of a sudden have your senses taking things in and then you experience uh i'm sad i'm hungry i'm whatever it's the very basic basic kind of experience um of the level and that's the it's the kind of lower mind um it's the lower it's it's just the basic needs um if you can think of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's that mm -hmm. kind of thing that says, I need to, I need to be warm or I need to be loved or I need to whatever it is, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling things and I'm sensing things. And there's a lot that you can do in order to nourish that piece of you, which is to have your needs met. Um, moving, moving inward, then you have your logical, rational thinking self. Um, and so that's your higher mind, the, the part of you that actually is kind of expected at work the one that can do the complicated analysis and and understand the differences bet between things it's also the part of you that winds up be becoming the most disconnected from your body and so um reintegrating all of those things is very very important so for instance uh something like switching from typing at work to using your hand to write in a journal or write on a piece of paper instead is a helpful way to kind of connect that high thinking mind back to, mm -hmm. to, to the body. Um, and then the, the fifth layer is, is it's called the bliss body. Um, but it, it's really about that profound sense that you're part of the greater good in the world, that you're connected to something bigger than yourself and that you feel that level of joy and purpose and meaning and all those deep things. So the whole category of prioritizing wellness is about not just the normal definition of wellness, but all five of you, <laughs> mm. every last bit of that from outer layer to inner layer, from, from big to subtle, 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 subtle. And so a lot of that is about really starting to pay attention why so to not get to a point where you're so disconnected that you don't hear the many things that your body is communicating so early on you might you know staring at a screen have some postural neck issues but you're not paying attention when it's quiet and then later that turns into a pinched nerve or you're not paying attention when the quiet signals are telling you something else. So the ability to pay attention is also a lot, uh, is really part of that. So it was the very, very long version of number one is prioritize wellness. Um, number two uh, is, is reconnecting now, now that you're, that you're on the path to wellness, and, and I actually recommend, sorry for the digression, really sitting down and trying at least one new habit a week, giving it a shot, seeing how it works for you, and either keep it and it becomes a permanent way of life or you tweak it or you throw it away because you don't have to keep everything. Um, but then when you move on, the next thing is, okay, now I'm listening to my body, I'm in my body, I'm prioritizing that, I may not be perfect at it, but I'm prioritizing it, now what? Now it's about reconnecting to the heart. And so not starting from, uh, you know, some esoteric goal, but to say, how is it that I want to feel? Mm -hmm. what, what is it that I, what is it that I want to accomplish when I'm connected and I'm part of this great good in this world? What's my part of that? And how do I want that to underpin everything that I want to do? So I, I firmly believe that, um, that, the, that the breathing and the meditative practices are really good for that. Because all the time, you know, and Sean Marie has heard me kind of boohooing on the phone before, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And <laughs> no, you don't know what you're supposed to do <laughs> until you get quiet mm -hmm. and you connect and you're able to do that. And so um, there's a really great... Um, 
meditation that, and then I recorded it for work as well. I recorded about a seven minute meditation for work uh, of the heart centering practice. And that has to do with, first of all, achieving heart coherence. And so the science under that is the Heart Math Institute. Mm -hmm. So that's slowing your breath down to between five and seven breaths per minute, focusing a little bit more on the heart and being able to do all that. So we can put a pin in that for later. But, but I find that just slowing down, reconnecting, um, making sure that you're, you're, you're in rest and digest mode so that your brain can be turned back on. Um, that's, that's super important. So, so that was number two is heart connection, soul, gut, whatever, you, whatever word you want to use, it doesn't matter. The point is that, that you're leading from that place in you that is that wise, everlasting peace. You know, whether you believe in, I, I believe in everything and I believe in nothing. So let's just say there's a part of us that lives forever, right? That part that is connected to the greater good, that's where we're leading from. The part that knows the right things to say, the part that heals relationships, the part of you that is always doing things the right way. Mm. Um, so that part is the one that we're connecting to and leading from. Uh, number three Jen, is... Uh, Jen, I'm going to jump in really quick. Yeah, Tell me, how, how did you frame number two? Just what was the title of number two? So the title of number two is, um, is reconnecting, but uh, starting, with your, uh, starting with your heart, basically. Okay. Is that when, you, when you've taken a pause, I'm assuming, so the four ways to get your soul back means you first, you lost your soul. <laughs> and now you're, you, then what, one, number one, what you did was you prioritized your wellness. And so now, okay but I still don't have my soul back. <laughs> right. And so now I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually putting to the title of this, I'm putting my soul, my heart, my, whatever you want to call it, my greater self, my satnam, if you like Sanskrit, I'm putting that thing first. So that means I have to figure out some way to first connect to it and then start from there. So Got number it. three, number three says, now I, I'm aware. I'm, I'm paying attention to my body's needs. Number two is I now also have my heart kind of flickering on and, and leading the way. But what happens the second that you read a nasty email that's written to you or, or you turn on the news and something horrible happens? And my experience has been that all these damn retreats that I've gone to, I come right back and I'm back in this <laughs> gritting my teeth. I've lost it all like immediately. So number three is about keeping one eye closed. Mm. And uh, I can't take credit for that. That comes from Dr. Mala Cun Cunningham. Um, I'm going to get her organization wrong, but she basically leads um, a center for cancer yoga for cancer research. Anyways, she was the co-presenter at a workshop on the neurophysiology of meditation and yoga. Mm. And so this was a question that I asked because we were about to leave and I was so blissed out at this point in time. I was eating nourishing food. I had no work schedule. I was all relaxed and learning in my preferred mode of being. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm going to go back to work. I'm going to read one mean email and I'm going to be done. It's going to all be gone and it's going to be. And she said, you just have to keep one eye closed. That one eye, metaphorically, is actually turned inward. So you have one eye that's always monitoring the inside, staying mm -hmm. in touch. What's going on? How am I feeling? Staying mindful, staying present. And it's also filtering out negativity. but with the eye that's open, you are fully engaged. You're fully connecting with all the things that you've just done. You've created your wellness and you've started with your heart. So you're, you can't not participate in the world. You still got to participate in this world, but you've got one bit of protection here. I don't have to attend every fight I'm invited to, <laughs> right? I don't have to go down that road. Um, discerning isn't easy. So, and mind you, I'm excellent at laying all this stuff out. I still suck at living and breathing it all the time. Okay. So hypocrite over here, let's just say this point blank, but it's a practice 
and I'm fully uh, involved and in living the practice. That's for sure. It's so, not being a hypocrite. It, it's a journey. It's yes. a journey. I mean, it, and we live in the world. We do. Yep. You know, yep. so we can have all of these these great intentions and so forth, but the world is is always with us, and and we just have to learn how to how to keep one eye closed. That's right. That's right. And and actually, so uh, in and I'll um I'll I'm gonna be mindful of time because all this stuff can can be hours and hours. But um, two components for me in keeping one eye closed. So this is my own additional journey on top of uh, the guidance that I receive. So number one is about strategically placing cues all around you. So um, just like Sean Marie's background behind her, I actually have created my work environment to be more like that rather than, you know, even more so than even my home environment. I put cards, oracle cards and truth bombs and everything all around me. And I have a salt lamp in the corner. People are like, does that thing work? I'm like, doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, it's like looking at it reminds me, ah, you know, this, no matter what's going on around you, this is the zone. This is the internal state that you want to have, even and especially in a place like this. So, and the other thing is, um, this also comes from a teacher of mine, uh, Martha McAlpine, who talked about having an emergency playlist. Um, so if you have Amazon Music or Spotify or whatever you have, create uh, one or more sets of songs that has one song that uh, helps you to cry, one song or that makes you cry or that you cry to, whatever. One song that allows you to rage out and be completely angry. <laughs> <laughs> and one song that picks you back up it is your jam so you 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 just deflate from you remove all the gunk from the day this is helpful because when you're moving from one environment to the other environment you want to get rid of whatever that environment did to you and by the time you've shown up you've been through your anger song your crying song and your pick me up i'm so motivated and happy song and that's how you show up to your next gig your your family or your kids from or your job or whatever it is so having all those kind of cues around you that help you to remind you to be back in is good and the second thing are are the habits and and that's much more about uh ways that you can just uh create mindfulness in everything that you do but i'll move on to the fourth for the sake of time and the fourth is um I don't have as well mapped out as all the other ones. And that is um, really now reconnecting. Um, so that now that you're lit up, that you will then notice other people that are equally lit up and take advantage of those opportunities to partner on things. So that you, you, have, you now have that thing that says, now I can have uh, opportunity and preparation meet in a magical way, and I'm ready to engage on all those things that keep me in that life-affirming cycle uh, where I have my soul and I'm, I'm excited to be doing the work. And that you're also, though, keeping the, um, a, uh, uh, a polite no in your back pocket for engagements that are not the kinds of things that are going to to um, move you where you need to be. Um, and that's how I met Sean Marie. <laughs> that's right. That is how we met. <laughs> yeah. And it's like we've known each other forever because both of us were in the right state in order to be engaging and, and partnering on things and, and, and being able to do some work together. Hmm. So, so those were the four, those were the four um, tips for, for reclaiming the soul. Um, and you know what, Jen, I think mm -hmm. I must have missed number, uh, number four. So just, just to recap in case anybody's taking mm -hmm. notes, number one is prioritize wellness. Number mm -hmm. two is reconnecting with and from the heart. Mm -hmm. Number three is keeping one eye closed, which is how we look inward and we're like, almost like someone's always on guard, like for protection. Uh, what mm -hmm. was number four? Cause I think I might've folded it into so number four kind of sounds like number two, except it's much more about actually creating connections. And so okay. maybe where number two is about, is about um, 
is about sort sort of stepping out back into the world from your from your heart place. Number four is actually about living and being in the world more connected than before, where you're now lit up and whole and you're um, you're you're making those those relationships and connections based from your place of wholeness. Um, um, it, it's a subtle difference, but uh, oh yeah, it's 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 kind of about maintenance. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Jen, this is this is so gorgeous, and uh, Patty and I always laugh about the fact like an hour goes by in a hot second, mm -hmm. um, and just how you know there's so much to unpack. But I'm I'm so grateful that we have you for the short time that we do have you for tonight. But I just want to remind, um, is it Avril? Am I saying that right, Jen? Avril? Avril. Avril and Lisa and Lizzie, uh, if any of you have any questions, you please feel free to unmute and go ahead and ask uh, Jen or myself or Patty any questions, or if you want to type a question in the chat box, please do. Mm -hmm. um, but Jen, this is so incredibly captivating. And you know, something that I think is really, I made this little note here. Um, you were talking about how you really believe that we are all connected, that there is no separation. And I, I just feel the need to say out loud and remind anybody who is either on the call tonight or will be listening to the replay um, that this is coming from a doctor and a mathematician and um, somebody who's got like a brain the size of Texas, like you're so smart and educated and open and tender and sweet. And, uh, you know, when you were saying earlier, you're like, you know, um, hypocrite here, you know, because I can say all this stuff. But I think the truth is, Jen, that you are doing it by saying it, mm -hmm. right? Like, I think that it is those reminders. And I think that you tonight are being a beautiful example of number four. You know, you, you not only are talking about this deeper connection, you are being that deeper connection. You know, you are bringing your truth to this conversation. Mm -hmm. And, but I think that when we can share things like this in this kind of an environment, it can't help but get into ourselves, you know? So the reason that you can speak so clearly and passionately, um, and enthusiastically about this is because it is in you like this isn't something that you're parroting that you've memorized like this is this is who you are and and it's who you are being mm -hmm. and i think you know for those of us who are struggling um in any way with something i think it's really important like even with uh with number three keeping one eye closed um to to be willing to apply that compassion to ourselves and to recognize that we are doing the best that we can, but that when we are able to say these things out loud and they make so much sense or people respond, just like when you wrote the EOR newsletter, like people responded like, thank you so much. You're doing the same thing with us. And I think likewise, I'll speak for myself, you are reminding me of the power of standing in that place. You know, that I may not have it all together and, you know, what, you know, whatever this looks like, or, you know, I, I shared, I got to speak at a gig yesterday and whatever experience or impression people have of me, like there's still a lot going on beneath the surface, like in my day to day and how I feel about my business or my life or, or like it's, it's work. Right. Um, and I just, I think it's really it's just such a treat to have you talk about this and, you know, and give this really beautiful, well-rounded perspective, you know, from a scientific perspective, from a psychological perspective, from a spiritual perspective. And again, from someone who, you know, is employed by the DOD and who is a mathematician and a doctor. And, you know, so I think that you just really like check all these really beautiful boxes and it's exhilarating. So thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And, um, you know, just one quick thought, because one of the responses that came back um, was um, sort of to say, yes, you are so capturing the, the, the mood that many of us have right now of feeling just not connected in the right way or undervalued or underused but that they were kind of mad that 
I walked away feeling like I had to change or I had to get better. Like, you know, wait a second. You should, if somebody asks you how you're doing, you should be allowed to tell them legitimately how you're doing and that people shouldn't be only expecting an answer of, I'm great, everything's fine, the fake answer that we all kind of do when we pass in the hallway. So one of the things that, you know, so I, I thought that was so beautiful that they were offended on my behalf, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is that, you know, that's part of the, what's wrong around here is that, mm -hmm. you know, that no one's giving the time to really see someone else and hear it for what it is and then may, and then move on, you know. Um, uh, so I guess the, where I was going with this was that um, going towards a state of wanting to be in this zone of joy, living in a joy-filled state is not always pretty. <laughs> mm. There is sometimes a quick descent to uh, really feel whatever it is that we need to feel and then move and then move back towards where we need to go. So um, I, I, um, and I, and I had somebody else say something similar, which is, you know, that the, the worry that when I'm coming back and always trying to have this positive psychology spin on everything, which is, here's how I can get to be happy, even when people are kicking me, you know, when, you know, when I'm curled into a ball on the floor, you know, here's how I can still be happy. No, sometimes it's deep, and it's dark and it's okay you know you go through that but honestly the the point that i had to make to these people is i can't give them control over how i feel yeah. and that's the thing that that we're that that we share which is i'm going to feel the way that i want to feel if i can't actually make my circumstances be less toxic then i got to get out of those circumstances but ultimately i am going to be in charge of how I feel every day <laughs> to the best extent possible. And sometimes I will crash and burn and have a, have a giant meltdown. And other days it'll be where people are. And today I had, it was so wonderful. I had two people say to me, cause I'm right now rotating through offices as part of a technical development program that I'm in. And said, I'm so happy you're here. And I'm like, no one's ever said this to me. This is great. <laughs> and it's because I had already made, you know, that determination that I am here to show up, not just for the work, but I'm also here to show up for the heart work too. And so that where I see people suffering in miscommunications, I'm also going to be there for that reason too, even though it's not my job. <laughs> you know, I've, I've all... <clears throat> Along the lines of what you're talking about is, um, you know, that when that phrase first came out, fake it till you make it, mm -hmm. I had like a visceral reaction to that. Like, what, why do you have to fake it until you make it? I mean, what's wrong with saying, I'm not doing so great, or mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this, or could someone help me understand X, Y, Z? You know, what, what is this fake it till you make it? You know, it, and that isn't that what happens at every single networking meeting we go to? Everybody is faking it till they make it. <laughs> so there's nothing authentic really going on, mm. you know? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, um, we, uh, well, Patty knows this because she produces this wonderful show that we get to do. Um, but one of our topics a few months ago was faking it has its cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I was a big believer of it then and I still am. And I've, uh, you know, and I've, I have a question here for you, Jen, and I'm just going to preface it with this, that one of the things that I do, you know, to, to your point, Patty, speaking of networking is I got, I was so tired of a few things that happen at networking of the canned answers of people saying like, how are you? And they really could give a shit how I am. Like they're, it's just, <laughs> they don't really want to know. And I've often thought to say, do you really want to know? Yeah. Like, do you really yeah. want to know how I am? Cause this could take a minute, but if, if you're, if you want to go there, let's go there. Yeah, terrible. Thanks for asking. Exactly. Yeah. Like I'm not good. Like I just buried my dad or, I mean, or whatever it is, like it's, you know, um, it's like, yeah, I'm not good today. And, and to that point, I think we are also not conditioned, um, or supported with how to handle that. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if someone said, I'm, 
really horrible or I'm suicidal or my cat just got run over or, you know, or I, um, I hate my job. Um, who knows how to handle that? Very, I think, you know, percentage wise, it's probably a really, really low percentage. Um, but the point that I wanted to make is that one of the things that I do is there's a couple things that happen at networking events. And that is that when you're talking to someone and you feel them leave the building or you feel them looking through you, like, mm -hmm. oh, there's somebody over there that is more important than you that I really wanted. And you can feel them tune out and not even hearing what you're saying. And so I've done a couple of things. Like I let people off the hook. I'm like, you know what? Um, I'm going to cut this short. Like I'm going to go. Um, <laughs> and I used to call them out, be like, I can tell that you're interested in something else, but that just felt crappy to me. And it, and I also felt like the person I was saying to was completely oblivious to what I was saying or why I was saying it. So I just cut it short, <clears throat> excuse me, because it doesn't feel good to be talking to someone who's not present. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I do, because I crave, and Jen and I, you and I have talked a lot about this, I crave deep, meaningful, um, very real, very truthful conversations. And one of the things that we talk about with Truth is the New Black in this whole series through Connected Women of Influence is that we go there. Um, and I live for going there and because I feel like I have an allergy to small talk. I'm not a good small talk <laughs> person, but what I'll do when I'm in an environment, whether it's a party or a social gathering or a networking event, if someone's talking to me about what they do, I'll say to them, like, do you love that? Like, what do you love about that? And how does it, how does it actually make you feel? How does it feel to be a biochemist or uh, an airline pilot or an artist or a writer or a receptionist or a garbage collector like what is that like for you like do you love it um how did you get like i ask them questions that probably not very many people are actually asking them so i genuinely connect um, because i don't care about the canned answers and so the, the point of that jen was to was to ask you um what you do to start to bridge that gap like if you're feeling that things are staying superficial or they're not going the direction that you like are there tools that you that you leverage are there things that you do to extract the information that you really want or to get to the answer that you like if somebody's um you know being ambiguous about give, get, giving you an answer like how do you keep it more often than not in your preferred state of being especially in some of these environments that i know for you have been really difficult Hmm. That's an excellent question. And um, so that one's more of a work in progress, I, was, <laughs> I would say. Um, but uh, one of the things that I really love doing, and so because we're, we're all about Danielle Laporte today, uh, she had a podcast about um, higher self to higher self communications. And when I find myself not connecting directly with whatever is going on at the moment, I think about what's the best version of myself <laughs> and how would that be that person be talking to the best version of that person. And um, it's, it's sort of just a mental shift and it's not really, um, I don't, I don't have a very good explanation for it, but I found it to be really, really useful because then you're always um, finding the best light and the best interpretation for the things that, that they are saying um, and not uh, and, and also staying attentive to potentially a gold nugget coming in between the other things that you don't understand or really have a way to place what they're saying to you because I've found that you know when I don't have a good reaction when I sort of have a visceral reaction about something I might not actually be listening anymore uh, to your point, to your point, but I'm not usually the rude one, you know, staring away, but I, I still don't know how to really a, a engage. But I find that if I then just sort of visualize the, the lifted up, you know, whatever faux picture works for you, you know, the angelic version of me talking to that, you know, that the, the, the um, enlightened version of them, um, then I find that I can actually get 
get what I need out of the communication and it's a lot better. I also then can then respond just to the parts that I want to highlight. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like positive, you know, reinforcement. Um, this was the good stuff and I'm going to acknowledge the good stuff yeah. um, in that communication. So then people also know what I prefer, you know, in, in general. Um, I know we don't have a lot of time, but um, you had asked earlier about the conference that I had given a mini version of uh, core desired feelings, how to do that in a uh, technical work setting. And um, this particular conference you couldn't have gone to, it was a <laughs> internal government con conference uh, about performance improvement. And I knew that every single uh, presenter for this particular conference was going to be giving some sort of technical solution or some Lean Six Sigma, you know, some mm -hmm. whatever it was. And so essentially, I worried that maybe my thing would be a little bit kitschy, but I, my title of my breakout session was, this is the number one thing you should be doing. And um, then I had to give a five minute speed talk. Everybody who had a breakout session had to give a kind of a five minute teaser to get you, get somebody to want to go to your breakout session as opposed to somebody else's breakout session. So I figured, okay, I'm not going to get everybody. I'm going to go ahead and tell the answer. And the answer is you're supposed to be feeling joy. <laughs> <laughs> and and so uh, rather than giving a boring talk, my my thing was a workshop, which basically had folks go through what does joy look like for me? You know, so somebody else's there are some people who are very outdoorsy. Joy is you know hiking through the no, I'm not you know <laughs> that's not joy. That's torture, you know, or whatever it is. I mean, <laughs> if you find it, what you know. Joy looks very different for each of us. Sometimes, you know, there's some people who joy is just being snuggly all the time with someone. And sometimes that's good. You know, other times it's just, I want, you know, I want to have, I want to feel more, more just easygoing and less, you know, less serious, whatever it is. Um, there are so many different ways of being and all of our preferred ways of being aren't the same. So we, we broke up and we talked a little bit about what were some times where we just felt so great. It was a great experience and it was a listening experience so that the partners would be able to say, hmm, it sounded to me like you felt and then fill in the blank. So they didn't actually have to come up with their own words for how they like to feel. They would, uh, would allow other people to sort of say, that sounds to me like, and then and marinate it so it was a little bit of a, a way to kind of kick kickstart the conversation for how they like to feel and then the next thing that we talked about is um is some ways to quickly be able to feel the way you want to feel even when you're when when things are going on kind of along the lines of of whatever it was so there's a there's a meditation called the loving kindness meditation and it, it takes a little bit of time because you're essentially going through wishing yourself well, wishing others well in a, in a number of ways, um, for wishing for people to be free of suffering, all these things. But there is a 10 second version of that, which is to literally just close your eyes and imagine two people nearby or somewhere else or in virtual land and just keep repeating to yourself that you wish for them to be happy. And in 10 seconds, it's not possible to still feel all the ways that you were feeling, the negative ways you were feeling before, if you were actually repeating to yourself a wish for other people to be happy. And so that's kind of, so we did little, little bitty techniques there about how you can kind of shift and, uh, and, and, and shift gears and get back on, get, get back on track. Um, we also talked about um, a little bit about now what, what should you start doing in your work environment in order to be feeling, in order to support the way that you like to feel. So if someone's word came up as vibrant, you know, for example, the person who's vibrant should not be uh, hosting really long working meetings. They're going to feel like death. <laughs> you know, so they're not that that's not how they should be operating. So they should be having these short sinks, you know, hey, everybody, what's going, let's go around the room. What's your, what are you working on? How did that, that's how they want to feel vibrant, active, whatever it is. They should probably also, um, you know, uh, offer to go on walking meetings. I mean, 
I was so floored. I, I went to somebody's office. I was like, hey, can I talk to you about something? And I sat down in their office. They're like, uh, would you like to walk? I'm like, I had never thought about walking. <laughs> <laughs> so we had our meeting walking around the building, you know, so th that's what a vibrant person should be doing. So for example, somebody who wants to feel cozy should have a hot water kettle at their desk, you know, and pour themselves cups of cups of tea and have a pashmina around them or whatever it is. Engineer that stuff into your environment and and you know be able to keep those feelings and that it actually dovetails right with the one eye closed piece it, 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 if you have all those things strategically placed around you you are able to better stay in that state and filter out the things that, that are throwing you off balance so i'll stop there because i know we're coming up against a uh, a, a, an ending point, but it was a really, really great experience. And I must tell you, I'll just brag for one second. My room was the farthest room from the main central uh, auditorium. I thought I'd have zero people. So I worked very hard on my five minute pitch to get people there. And I got more than the keynote speaker had in the main room. So I was <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Good for you, honey. Because people are hungry for meaning. They're starving for something real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So thanks for having me. I really, really enjoyed this conversation. Jen, I really loved it too, honey. And thank you so much. And you know what? I can only imagine um, the gift that you brought to the people that got to attend your session. And you know, um, and I'm just so thrilled that you knew the value that you had to offer to the point where you went there, where you're like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to knock my five minute, you know, quick pitch out of the park and hopefully get a few people to my room. And, you know, look what happened. Like we were talking about authenticity is irresistible, you know, and so is the truth. And I'm just so, I'm so thrilled that you got to do that and had that experience and what you are doing in your life and in your work and in the world, it's really important, Jen. So before we wrap up, I just want to check in with you and say, Jen McIntosh, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling um, awesome. <laughs> I am so glad. How are you feeling, Patty? I feel good. I feel relaxed. I, I was stressed coming into this because I slid into it. Now I feel great. Yeah. And Avril, if you're still with us, if you if you want to un unmute, you don't have to. But uh, you and Lizzie, I certainly want to invite you if you'd like to share with us how you're feeling uh, after our uh, after our call tonight. Say a few words. Thank you for inviting me. It was great. I don't get to connect my, with my daughter very often, but uh, <laughs> this is a good opportunity. And uh, I always learn a lot by listening to her. Mm. My background is uh, taking care of business every day, all the time. And it's not often that I get the opportunity to think about the spiritual and other kinds of things that are an important part of people's lives. And uh, just a couple of comments about uh, Jen's four points. The prioritizing wellness has always been important to me. And that's always been kind of the physical aspects of getting out there and having fun, getting the endorphins going. And uh, not much on the spiritual. And every time I connect with my daughter, I, I kind of get recharged. And uh, mm. so as, uh, as the career winds down and as you start looking for what's the future going to bring, you start thinking, what can I do to increase personal wellness and to uh, do good and continue to do good in the world? And um, with re respect to um, the the issues that face people in their older years, we start to think about what we need to do to calm down and uh, reconnect with the other kinds of things and so uh, issues of uh, for instance bringing down blood pressure or reducing the fight and flight 
aspects of one's life that uh, one is faced with during the entire life and career, you start to look to what can be done with respect to meditation and breathing and those kinds of things. So I, I enjoy connecting with my daughter on that uh, level. And uh, I appreciate that you were able to put this on and I was able to participate. Thank you very much. You're so welcome, Avril, and I'm so grateful for your words and for your willingness to, to show up here tonight with all these other <laughs> wonderful ladies and uh, your insight and your, your sharing was really beautiful and so sincere and touching and thank you for being here. It was really lovely to have you and I just have to say I adore your daughter to pieces. <laughs> not that that's not completely obvious, but Thank you so much. It really means the world to me that you were here and that you shared with us tonight. So thank you. And it was lovely to meet you. And Lizzie, did you want to share with us before we call it a night? She, she wrote something in chat. Oh, um, she did. Okay. You, Jen, would you mind reading it? Uh, well, I'm not sure oh. if she doesn't want to unmute or not, but yeah, she it says, says your mic isn't working on her. Oh, okay. She, so she says, I feel energized. That was great. And I'm excited to implement some of the four steps now, starting with my emergency playlist. <laughs> Sorry, my <laughs> laptop's microphone isn't working right now. Oh, Lizzie, that's awesome. I'm so glad you're doing that. It's one of the first things I did too, because it's the easiest. <laughs> it's like, although then I became very stressed out about which songs I had to pick, you know, <laughs> I could pick the perfect song, but then I just, I just made multiple playlists. So it was great. It was, it, it, it's a great one to do. It really, really helped me. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Lizzie, thank you so much. And thank you for reading that, Jen. And uh, I will just wrap up by saying that I feel so filled up and I feel anchored and I feel enriched and I definitely feel vibrant. In fact, I feel like my, like my cheeks are rosy. It's either that or I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> um, but I just feel incredibly grateful. And I came in tonight's call really hot. So, um, and I don't mean like temperature hot, like I have had a crazy day. Um, so I was right there with you, Patty. Like I came in hot and uh, as always, this conversation, this work, um, everybody that was here just contributed to the relaxation of my nervous system and the expanding of my heart. And I'm just so grateful. So um, with that, I'm going to say good night to everyone. And thank you, Patty, for once again, producing a beautiful show. I'm super grateful for you. And Dr. Jen McIntosh, I love you again. So important <laughs> what you're doing in the world and uh, to be continued. So good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Good night. Thanks so thank, much. Thank you, Patty. Bye. Happy holidays, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.